So regardless of whichever seller spreadsheet you're using, and you're gonna see me using the Etsy one in this example, hopefully you have just finished watching the video tutorial for importing in your CSV from whatever the e-commerce platform you're using was, and now chances are you have some sales or some revenue from sources other than that platform that you just imported from. So how do you enter those in your spreadsheet? It's gonna be the same no matter which seller spreadsheet you have. So I'm gonna walk you through how to use this custom sales tab and then enter any other potentially custom income sources you wanna use on your spreadsheet. So keep in mind that the goal with this spreadsheet is is to be your bookkeeping center. You wanna record all your sales here, not just the sales that you're importing in, but all your sales for your shop or for your business. I have got a custom sales tab here that I'm gonna show you how to use, and then there's also three customizable rows for entering revenue from other sources directly on the monthly summary tab. So for instance, you might sell via craft shows, you might have consignment shop income, you might be using the Etsy seller spreadsheet but also have a Shopify site or sell on Amazon or whatnot. Let's show how you would use these and rename these to fit all those situations. So let's say I sell on Shopify, maybe you're using the Shopify import add-on and you wanna add those sales here. You can just click these white cells and rename them to be whatever you need. And you can also rename this green row for whatever types of sales you might enter here. Now you might just want to leave this as like other sales or maybe these are going to specifically be like cash check sales. You can double click this tab or right click it and go to rename to give it a new name. Um, you can change the name up here if you want. And I would change this cell right here to match that. So I'm gonna call it cash or check sales. Anything that you enter on this tab will travel over to the green row and the applicable month, just like how entering your business expenses on these expense tabs work. So to enter transactions on this tab, you would enter a date. And remember, you want it to be for whatever year you're currently working on doing your books for, whatever year this spreadsheet is set up for. So in this example, I'm working with 2020. And then a lot of times, especially if you're selling in a state or a country that has sales tax or GST, or I don't even know all the different types of taxes there are outside of here, but if you're in the US, you usually want to know your pre-sales tax total and how much sales tax you collected, especially if you're using this for cash or check sales or like craft shows or in-person sales. Those are oftentimes sales in which you're also charging sales tax to those in-state customers. So let's say you collected 60 bucks from your customer, but you also got $7 in sales tax from them. You can enter the pre-sales tax total and the sales tax you collected, and it's gonna automatically add those two guys together for you, and the gross sales total, including sales tax, will travel over here to the applicable month of this green row. So there's my $67. And it's doing it like this because usually you wanna record gross sales, including sales tax collected, on your revenue area for your books and on your tax return. That's why sales tax collected is included here as well. And then whenever you actually pay your state, you get to take a deduction. You can enter a business expense wherever you want on your spreadsheet for the amount of sales tax you actually pay over to your state. Of course, if you're collecting a transaction you know, out of state or in a state in which you don't have Nexus and you, those customers or those sales don't need to have sales tax charged on them, you can just put zero or even leave that cell blank and don't worry about it. The gross amount without sales tax will travel over to the applicable place. So that's how you use that cash or check tab. You can enter in the rest of this stuff as you want. The important stuff is really just the date and the amount of money, but you can put like what craft show you were at, um, a description of the sale if you want, like maybe you wanna keep track of what you sold or who you sold it to, the customer, whatever you want, payment source, uh, maybe if you wanna put like cash, check, 
square, swipe, whatever, um, and then anything else that you may want to record regarding that sale. The only other thing that I want to note with this is when it comes time to do your sales tax forms, you may want to be able to quickly total up your in-state sales uh, that were subject to sales tax. It's not going to automatically travel over here because this spreadsheet doesn't know what state these sales were in. So you may need to be able to, if you're entering a lot here, you may need to be able to quickly total up these guys to get that pre-sales tax total for your state sales tax forms, especially if all of these were in-state sales. And you can get that just by highlighting whatever sales you wanna see and looking at the sum area down here. Um, that's just a quick and easy way to do that. Just something to keep in mind. For any other sources, you know, you can use this tab to enter individual sales from whatever sources you want. You can even put all your sources of sales in here um, and you can sort them by vendor or description. Um, but you also have the option, and this is especially helpful if you're using a Paper and Spark import add-on, you also have the option to use these custom revenue rows to just rename to be whatever source you need. And then you can enter the monthly total here of however many sales you had on that platform or from that source for the entire month. So if you wanna break it out into an individual transaction, especially if you're dealing with sales taxes for some sales, but not all, you might wanna use the green tab. If you are okay putting in the lump sum here, you can just type these guys in directly to this uh, area of your monthly summary tab. One important thing to note when we're talking about entering sales from other sources is that the paperonspark.com shop also has import add-ons. So this is if you want to be able to quickly total up your sales and fees from a source other than the seller spreadsheet that you're already using. So so for instance, if you're using the Etsy seller spreadsheet, you don't need the Etsy import add-on because you're already able to import in from Etsy, but let's say you also sell on Shopify and you don't really feel comfortable or you wanna save time and you don't want to manually figure out what your gross revenue from Shopify and your fees from Shopify and all that stuff is, that's when you can just grab a Shopify import add-on from the Paper and Spark shop. Uh, same scenario applies to any other source that you may also want to be able to quickly import in those sales and fees from. So let's say I was using the Shopify import add-on from Paper and Spark. I figured out that I made $1,293.68 from Shopify. I can enter that revenue over here and now i'm able to import from multiple sources quickly and still have all my totals in one spot so if you need to grab an import add-on that is what it can do for you it basically allows you to import in from more than just etsy